in our new technology age of solid state devices, vacuum tube high fi fans may have wondered where did old car radios get the necessary voltage to power vacuum tubes? We know today we have efficient solid state inverters capable to deliver high alternating voltages out of 6 or 12 volt batteries, but back in the 40s and the 50s, those resources were not available. We also know know that a radio receiver requires several stages of amplification using electronic vacuum tubes, which require high voltages to operate, around 250 volts. It was necessary to have car radios with a power supply which could invert and step up the 6 volt battery DC voltage into high voltage AC. Then rectifying it back to DC, thus providing the necessary high DC voltage. A transformer could be used as long as the switching device is added for reversing the battery terminals going to the primary of the transformer in order to simulate an alternating current, so the transformer can work. The switching device is called a vibrator. Let's first watch its operation in slow motion. The center tap of the transformer primary is connected to the positive terminal of the 6 volt battery and through the vibrator context, the negative of the battery voltage is connected to one end of the primary. By this action, the electron current goes one way, producing a magnetic field of a certain polarity in the iron core of the transformer. A fraction of a second later, the contact switch position, and now the electron flow reverses the magnetic field in the iron core. This changing magnetic field induces an AC voltage in the transformer secondary, just as in any AC generator. Now we will have a high voltage AC. In real world operation, this cycle repeats itself 120 times every second, so a stable AC appears in the secondary, and the output voltage depends on the turns ratio of the transformer. The other components of the circuit, capacitors, resistors, and inductors, are used to absorb the electrical noise produced by the switching vibrator, and also to extend contact life. Anyway, once the alternating voltage was generated, the AC was rectified using a simple rectifier circuit by means of a special vacuum tube which contains two diodes and a couple of electrolytic capacitors to filter out the ripple. The voltage required by the vacuum tubes, so popular back then, was generated. I hope this video has been useful to you. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel. Chava Tarin.